Hello everybody, welcome to this playthrough for Master Division with various uh, wind here in Golf Clash and the game. Before we have a closer look at all the content in this video, make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button, also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. That helps the channel immensely. For those of you that do want to take the next step in your game and improve it even more, you can scan the QR code here on the screen or use the link that is in the description down below called patreon.com slash gold clash tommy we there have checkpoint challenge tour play and tournament guides for everyone so make sure to check it out and sign up and improve your game today you can start as low as three dollars per 30 days info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment elevation adjustment also what ball and club type i suggest you to play with have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to but there is always a plan behind it so let's go to hole number one On hole number one, we're going to play on the left-hand side uh, always. It doesn't matter what uh, wind we are having because from the left-hand side, we have a more open line towards the pin. Due to that, you see that dolphin bunker that I like to call it on the right-hand side. We are going to set the red ring by the rough line. We are pushing this drive as hard as we feel that we can because there will always be risks, especially when we do have the bunker on the right and the top left bunker as well, that we could get close to the uh, closer roll into the rough if we are not making a correct drive. Max plus 20 for the adjustment. You can see that I'm using a standard Kingslayer. And the ball rolls nicely down and sits close to the rough, but, I mean, we're still safely on the fairway. 348 yards. On the second shot, we are going to play with a long iron here. You can play with a grizzly as well if you do not have the B52 level 7 or better. The reason I say that is because we do want to have a good ball guideline. My intention with this type of play is to either land on the fringe, but as we are close to the max line and it would require us to use a lot of um, a lot of backspin, I've decided to go more left, try to find a spot that I do like, and then applying spins from there so the ball guideline goes one green square through the hole. Not an ultimate spot, but still a spot that is something we can work with. Adjust is no elevation, and then it's going to be true club. So here we're going to be somewhere around 60% of our club. Obviously, if you do want to add on and counteract for the wind push, you're going to have to either add on slider or you have to add on elevation. Otherwise, you will most likely do what I'm doing in the video and to miss left. No matter what, though, this is an eagle chance where um, laying up is always going to be a bit tougher than if you would be having a tailwind. Because in a tailwind, we are going to send it. Hole number seven, this is um, a sand bump that we're gonna play. This is a weird wind. I was trying to play an NNT first, but the trees are messing up the view many of the time. So what we're doing is we're adding all the top spin with QB and four left spin, P0 max rest. And once we have found that spot, we are swapping to the rock and then you can keep the P1, P0 ball if you would like, or you can swap to any other um, yeah, P0 plus, side spin 4, plus wind 5 ball. Adjust 1 to 1, pulling from the white ring. Uh, this is like in between um, two angles where I'm kind of deciding for, okay, should I be going with no, uh, no tweak or should I be going with one click of left? I go no tweak here, so I'm doing a circle drop over power as per default and then tweaking from there. Perfect ball it is. And we bounce into the sand and we roll down the green, dropping nicely for and holding one. Have in mind that I've been hitting great left and great right and still roll out from the sand. You do have actually quite a bit of margin, so it looks scarier than what it is. I believe this is a solid chance for and holding one on a tough wind on a tough part three. Get our guide on patreon.com slash golf clash tom. On hole number three, we are going to utilize this tailwind. And sure, you can use a ball that you can technically send this one, try to get close to the green. But I personally don't feel that's the way I want to do because 
if you do get into the rougher in, in the sun by the green, which is a very likely outcome, then that's going to be a hard save from there. What I like to do though is to still use the Tailwind with a Power 5 Ball. Playing with a Luminary here for, is, as example. I do adjust max plus 20 and then I'm pushing up a certain amount of rings depending on wind angle and wind strength. And then applying outside wall right curl with max overpower. A great ball here is uh, still okay, but obviously a perfect is to be suggested. We do want to get this ball as far up the fairway possible without obviously risking rolling into the rough on the right. Because instead of laying up for a wood club, which is the normal way of playing this hole, or at least that's the way we are playing in more or less every wind angle besides tailwind, then we do want to have at least a long iron towards the pin. So you can see here now that we're attacking via a pin check, we are going to go for a rough bump. Again, this is the natural way of playing in Master. We are trying to utilize the rough where we can, because in the end though, we do want to minimize the effect by the wind after the first bounce. And doing a rough bump, that's what we're doing, because you can see here how small that first bounce is compared to if we would be bouncing on the fairway. And this rough, to be fair, is very large and shall, shall be a lot uh, for missing that one. No elevation, as uh, we do not need as much adjust due to, you can see here now, that even though the pin stands on a lower ground, we still are not really playing this one as any downhill elevation. Comes in right of the pin, needed less adjust, but again, it was an all by feel adjustment. The rough bump here, in my opinion, is the best way to go. On hole number four, we are starting with a power five ball and preferably a sniper and a grizzly. Now I do have the sniper and a B-52, which is not really what I want. We are going to be uh, with our target at the min line. We're looking for the ball guideline to go through the hole. It's a little bit glitchy there, so make sure to find the right spot. But again, if you do have the Grizzly, it's going to be so much easier because having the B-52 makes for no firm ball guideline. Once we have found that spot with our sniper, we're swapping to our cat bag. The reason for that is that we do not want to pull into max club with our sniper and also allow us to pull just one time, meaning that we don't want to pull more than 10 rings. Max plus a 30, and in this wind angle, I'm using two clicks of right curl. What you need to have in mind though, it's like I'm following an old guide page for this hole. That's why I'm doing some wind angle tweaks. I'm just following that to the T. And you see, we have nice bounces roll down onto the green and dropping nicely uh, for and holding one. Take your game to the next level with our ultimate tournament text guide for the Aquatic Retreat 9-hole Cup Master Division. If you do want to be competitive without having to spend hours in the practice mode, then our guides are the best ones uh, to get. Scan the QR code here on the screen or you go to patreon.com slash golfclash via the link that is in the description down below. If you are a player that just not looking for the tournament guides but you may also look for tour guides and checkpoint challenge we have something for you as well. So make sure to select the package that suits you the best and if you do have any questions before sign up you can always email our beautiful support at support at golfclashtommy.com On the drive here in hole number one, we are going to start at max P1 rest with the rock and the white ring by the rough line. Four top spin, one right spin, swap to a puck and sniper bag. Adjust max plus 20 P0, which is one to one with a puck eight. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna adjust and we're gonna do circle drop, sorry, just before circle drop overpower. We're looking to get the drive to around 347 or 348. This drive has been extremely consistent with the drive distance, which obviously allows for a um, good look at the second shot, because that is what I value on uh, such an elevated hole like this. If we can get the drive in the correct spot, more or less every time, that's going to be very helpful for the approach. 
On the second shot, we're doing a pin check and we are adding all the top spin and three right spin. Yes, we are going for a sand bump. The only focus point I have here now is to have the ball guideline two green squared, like two and a click um, green square through the hole. So ball guideline just over two green squares and just through the hole. This is the yellow angle, which is gonna call for one click of overpower. I'm looking at the far distance to where the sand meets the water, like the first piece of sand on the first big rock island uh, is what I'm looking for. One click of overpower is what I'm using here. Adjust is from plus one and plus two, one to one plus 0 0.5. You can see we land nicely into the sand, comes in with good speed and rolling dead center for the eagle here on hole number one. Get our guide, new season and everything for pro expert and master division. Sign up through the QR code or the link in the description down below. On the drive here on hole number three, this drive has been tested and verified for all the tweaks that I'm going to explain here in the video. Start at uh, the max P3 rest, red ring by the rough line with a POC 8. A POC 8 and a POC 7 is going to play with all the top spin and 0 0.8 left spin. Adjustment is going to be max um, plus 20 P0, 1 to 1 with a POC 8. Push up is going to be 4. Uh, Apoc uh, 7, we are pushing up 2 yards always. For Apoc 6, we are pushing up 10 yards always. And that's going to be the same for Apocalypse level 5. However though, the twist with Apoc 5 to be able to get to the same spot, because Apoc 5 obviously have 5.8 top spin. So what we're going to do is that you're going to do the full procedure with Apoc 5, set it up, make the adjustment, push up. But after you have pushed up, you're going to swap to the extra mile, level 9. And then you're going to set the spins, because the extra mile level 9 is going to give you the possibility of play with 7 top spin, uh, which, uh, sorry, is going to get you the possibility to play with the top spin that we do want to have. So follow the instructions with extra mile level 9 uh, in the guide, and then you will get yourself to a nice distance. Second shot, we're going to play with our Cataclysm. Here, using two right spin and four top spin always. We're looking to have the inner ring to be by the rough line with uh, Cat 7 and Cat 8. Ball guideline through the hole. Cat 5 and Cat 6 will still have a ball guideline due to that we're playing a rough bump, but you will have the inner ring slightly overlapping instead. Now, this is an adjustment that we have from plus 5 and plus 6 we are going to uh, play with 84% slider and we are using no elevation, P4 numbers. Center the ball and hit perfect, obviously follow the wind angle tweaks on the second shot for best effect. And uh, once we do hit the rough, you can see here that we land nicely, we can hit a great right, we can hit a great left, and with a perfect, we do have a good chance for a drop. Get our guide, new season and everything, and patreon.com slash golfclashtommy, scan the QR code, or use the link in the description. All number seven in headwind, we are forced to play on the right hand side. If we do have a tailwind or a crosswind, we are going to play over the left hand side, going for a short iron or a long iron. But in a headwind, we're going to have to lay up, and this is going to be a sniper play from distance. QB at max P3 rest, he has to find a solid landing spot. It's very common to do so, especially in master division. Changing to a poke and sniper bag, this to not pull into max club. And using six top spin and one right spin. Circle drop over power with half a ball of right curl. Sure, I do hit a great left, but you can see here now that we are still fine. Perfect and great right is obviously still fine. This is a drive that we need to value consistency. What I mean with that is there is a glitch hole as well, and we need to design the drive so we either uh, make sure to get the glitch roll all the time or we'll make sure to get the glitch roll none of the times. If we're getting it sometimes, then that's going to be very difficult for us to then dial in this shot from distance. 
Now we are going to make a pin check here per default. I mainly do this even though I'm in general practice just to have a little read once we do get into the tournament as well. One backspin and one right spin in the ring to be by the edge of the rock line ball guideline through the hole. You can see that the ball guideline going plenty through the hole and the reason for that is that we do have a headwind and it will compress the ball guideline so if we leave it shorter we are going to come in short. 10% elevation and true club slider we are playing like approximately 85 to 90 percent of our club here and we hit perfect bounce into the rough and rolls up onto the green dropping dead center for the eagle here in seven but like i said in the beginning if you do have a crosswind or a tailwind then we're going to play on the left hand side and lay up for a short iron if we do have a headwind we're going to play on the right hand side like here in the video For hole number eight, uh, this is a very tough par three and there will be very few people that are dropping this one on a consistent basis. Here you can either decide to go for like a play like this or you can go for some type of a backspin play. Uh, I would say like this, if I do have a crosswind or I do have a tailwind, I'm going to bounce similar to this. If I do have a headwind, I'm going to use the backspin and go uh, above the bunker instead. That's at least my in initial plan. Adjust max plus 40. Again, that adjustment will differ massively depending on what type of design you are doing or following um, on this part three. Using one top spin here and one left spin. The left spin is perfect to counteract the wind, but the one top spin is a little bit too little. And as you can see here, we would be having like one and a half, 1.8 top spin. That would definitely be sniffing the hole. I did not spend much time on this one in general practice. I wanted to just show you the and explain to you the way I'm thinking on this tough par 3, which I consider to be one of the tougher par 3s to be consistent with in the whole game. On the drive here on hole number 5, option number 1, we're stretching out to max with the white ring to be by the rough line. Then we're adding spins, which is 5.5 top spin and 3 left spin. Now, once you've found that spot with a P1 ball has to be set as well, you can either stay with a P1 ball or you swap to any P2, 3 or 4 ball, doesn't really matter. The more power you have, the slower the needle on the drive will be. P2 and better will be uh, a completely slow needle. A P1 ball does have a little bit of a shaky needle, not much. Max overpower and we are looking to get to around 390 to 396 yards. On the second shot, we are going to play with three left spin and seven top spin as spin A. So we're setting that, we're moving past seven and then back. Ball guideline to now with cat seven and cat eight to be one cup left of the cup, to put it uh, accurately. Once we have found that spot, I'm zooming in like an absolute hero as well. We are uh, re spinning to six top spin. Again, hard spin, so we're moving past six and then back. Adjust, we are going to make an adjustment that is 50% slider, no elevation, P1 number, and that is from plus three and plus four. Pulling from the clearing here as well. If you are inside the bunker, we're gonna do no tweak. If you are outside the bunker to the right, we're gonna do one left. Obviously, I mean, it sounds very simple, but if you happen to miss right, you most likely have too much 12-1. Missing left, too much 11-59. Ball bounces nicely into the rough, rolls down the green, and we are dropping this one right at pin for a beautiful albatross here in hole number five. This is option number one, a little bit aggressive as a great left on approach, maybe the risk of missing the rough. Get our guide on patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Master Division with Various Wind. Make sure to scan the QR code here on the screen and go directly to patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy. That is uh, via the link in the description down below. This for our premium guides. We offer premium guides for all the game modes in uh, Golf Clash. Thank you once again for watching. I wish you the best of luck in your Golf Clash game.